Hey guys, last few lessons we were looking at uh, heat of dissolution and ex exothermic endothermic reactions and release of energy or taking in of energy. Now we're still keeping on with the topic of uh, heat. So we're looking at thermal pollution and heat of dissolution and how is this affecting the environment. So first of all, we're looking at a first-hand investigation at the heat of dissolution of a substance. The aim of today is to use calorimetric me measurements to calculate the molar heat of solution of both sodium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. First we need to place 50 grams of water from a burette, burette makes it a lot more accurate, into a clean dry polystyrene cup for our calorimeter. Next we need to measure the initial temperature and record it. And then measure a known mass of ammonium nitrate, just say 2 grams, and add this to the water. We stir to make sure it all dissolves and the heat is all, uh, all the whole thing is dissolved and uh, uniform. And then measure the final temperature and record it down as well. We then we need to repeat this two more times to and average the results to make sure we get reliable results. Uh, then we have to repeat the same procedure with the sodium hydroxide to measure that. So the typical uh, results will look something like this. Our initial temperature should be around 25 degrees Celsius, depending on the temperature of the room. And in this case, it, the final temperature is going to be 324 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature of oh, 32.4 degrees Celsius. And so therefore, the change between this and this, we get 9.4 degrees Celsius. Ammonium nitrate will say the initial temperature is again 25 degrees Celsius because that's the temperature of the room. And then the temperature change is to 22.2% uh, degrees. So we get a change of negative 2.8 degrees Celsius. So the calculations what we do is firstly for ammonium nitrate, uh, the mass is 50 grams of water plus the two grams that we added of the ammonium nitrate. Our specific heat capacity of water is uh, 4.2 joules per kilogram, uh, Kelvin gram. And the change in temperature for ammonium nitrate, remember, was minus 2.8. It got colder a bit. Uh, so the change in temperature, uh, so the change in enthalpy is minus 52 times 4.2 times the minus 2.8. Because we need to times all these together to get the delta H, which is 600. 12 joules. So just remember that the change of 1 degree Celsius is equal to the change in 1 degree Kelvin. Uh, the question, uh, the equation usually uses delta T in Kelvin and that's okay because remember 1 degree change is 1 Kelvin change. So we use the Q equals MC delta T. So the mass of ammonium nitrate is 80.052 grams per mole. So the number of moles is equal to the molar mass over the ma uh, molar the mass over the molar mass. So we had two grams that we measured out. Divide this by the moles, the molar mass, and we get the number of moles at 0 point, 0 0.025 moles. So the delta H is equal to 612 divided by the number of moles. So 612 joules divided by the moles because remember we were looking at molar heats of solution. So this gives us 24,480 joules per mole. And that's equivalent when we convert the uh, units to kilojoules, that's divided by 1,000, 24.5 kilojoules per mole. So using that, we can just quickly run through some questions. So we're looking at calorimetry. We're looking, we have to add a known amount of substance to a known amount of water, take the initial temperature and the final temperature and use that to calculate just like we did here. So question one, define the heat of dissolution. Dissolution is the process by which a substance, either a gas, liquid or solid, forms a solution in a solvent. An example is our case, dissolving a salt into water. And the heat of dissolution is the change in temperature when the substance is dissolved in the solvent. And question two, how would you measure the heat of dissolution? Firstly, would you measure it by A, measuring the change in mass, uh, the mass should still stay the same. By measuring the initial temperature, no, we need to measure initial and final temperature and get the difference. 
so it's not B. C, by measuring the final temperature, again, for the same reason, we need two sets of measurements and then have the difference. Or by D, measuring the change in temperature from the initial to the final temperature. Uh, yes, we need to know the difference between them because uh, the equation is a change in temperature or enthalpy. So that means we need to know the initial and the final. So D is correct. So just to summarize, we just the method was we have a known amount of liquid, we measure the temperature. We then add in a known amount of your solvent, a uh, solute, dissolve that in, mix it up, and then make sure we take the final temperature. Uh, take the difference and then use the equations to then calculate specific changes in enthalpy. And in the next lesson, we'll just uh, continue on with the other calculations and look at the first-hand investigation, how we can make it more accurate and more reliable.